Changing personal behavior is a very promising way to improve health and reduce premature death. But many people who want to change their behavior without help do not succeed. So if we find a way to help these people change their behavior, this could have a very large impact. My name is Nila Albers and I am a PhD student at Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands. I am the first author of this paper and I was involved in designing and executing the study and also in analyzing the data that we collected. I am interested in learning how we can create algorithms that motivate or persuade people to help them change their behavior. And specifically, this is in the context of a virtual or computerized coach that is integrated in an e-health application that supports people in quitting smoking and becoming more physically active. E-health applications such as the virtual coach that we want to create have great potential for helping people. They can be available at all times and they can also be scalable. But the problem is that these applications suffer from high rates of dropout. So it seems that the applications in their current form do not meet the needs of the people who use them. And so we wanted to know why. For the study, we set out to get a comprehensive understanding of people's needs for a digital smoking cessation application. So what makes people use or stop using an application? For example, do people want to involve their general practitioner, partner or somebody else from their social environment in the application? We conducted a study in which 671 daily smokers interacted with our text-based virtual coach Sam in up to five sessions that were spread over two weeks. In each session, Sam assigned people activities for quitting smoking, such as ranking reasons for wanting to quit, watching an educational video on breathing exercises, or tracking one's smoking behavior. We collected three main types of data. The first is people's experiences with these activities. The second is people's barriers and motivators for doing the activities. And the third is personal characteristics such as the age or gender. We also asked people to describe their views on interaction scenarios with a virtual coach. For example, whether people would want to reflect with their virtual coach on Sundays. And we then triangulated these types of data with the findings from the literature in a mixed methods analysis. We obtained 14 themes that describe user needs. And these needs relate to a behavior that is performed, for example, watching an educational video, the user who performs the behavior, other parties that may be involved in a behavior, such as a virtual coach or a general practitioner, and the environment in which a behavior is performed. The most prominent theme we saw is the perceived usefulness of behaviors. For example, whether going to their GP for advice can help people in some way. But this perceived usefulness is not an isolated theme. It is connected to other themes, such as having sufficient time and the user's motivation to reach their goals. In our paper, we formulated literature-based recommendations for addressing each of our 14 needs. One example is how users' need for autonomy can be addressed by formulating recommendations less as commands and more suggestions, or by explaining how a recommendation is in line with the user's values. Our results imply that for those of us working on learning how to persuade people, it's important to not only consider how we say something, but also what we say. Traditionally, people have often changed the how. For example, they changed whether they would say that experts approve of something or whether peers think in a certain way. But given how important the perceived usefulness is, we need to consider more also what we persuade people to do. It is challenging to identify people's underlying needs from the diverse ways in which people talk about their experiences in their views. And additionally, determine whether what is being shared is specific to an individual participant to our specific study context, for example, our specific virtual coach, or is a broader phenomenon. There's not a single user need. There's a diverse set of needs that differ between people and their situations. And these needs are not isolated. They're interconnected. For example, a person says that they are too tired to do an activity, probably also thinks that an activity requires quite some effort, and that it is not very useful. So does this mean that we should propose activities at better times when people are not tired? Or that we should make activities easier? Or do we need to make them more relevant? So we need to think about appropriate ways of tailoring. 
The second important question is, of course, how these needs generalize to different domains, such as self-management of chronic diseases. It would be nice if we did not always have to run a study like ours to understand user needs as soon as we create an e-health application for a different domain. There are so many decisions that you need to make when designing an e-health application for behavior change. The behavior change techniques that you want to use, how often and when you want to use them, and whether and how you want to involve other people, such as a general practitioner or people's social environment. We hope that our needs and recommendations for addressing them help designers of these applications to make these decisions. Knowing how hard it is in our field to find publicly available data sets, we have made all of our data publicly available for other researchers to use.